All right, well, um, thank you, Kai, for the mention. I uh, appreciate it. That means we can skip some of our slides and uh, make the lightning talk a little bit longer. Um, so yeah, I'm here today. Um, we're going to talk about the government and the art of infrastructure maintenance. Um, I'm here. My name is Poen. I am a communications manager at the Sovereign Tech Fund. And I'm here with my coworker, Mirko, who is a program manager. And um, yeah, so we're just going to get started. And as you can see revealed, don't get too distracted, but there are t-shirts at the end. <laughs> so um, we're here to talk about infrastructure um, and that maintenance is something that governments are actually quite good at, but um, that we need to start thinking about how governments can play a role in the maintenance of what we call digital infrastructure or the foundational software components that undergird all the things that we build and do in modern society. Um, so yeah, that's the topic that we're gonna tackle in the next uh, nine minutes today. And um, just go into a little bit about what the Sovereign Tech Fund is, our mission, how we look at the technologies that we have, and then the different instruments, the mechanisms that the programs we've built up to, uh, to support digital infrastructure and um, the open source ecosystem. And then we're gonna talk a little bit about infrastructure maintenance, digital infrastructure, and a new program that we have, which is the Fellowship for Maintainers. Great, so the mission, uh, which you can see on our website, sovereigntechfund.de, um, is that the, our goal, our mission is to sustainably strengthen the open source ecosystem. And how do we do that? We look at uh, security, we focus on security, resilience, and technological diversity, and also in particular, the people behind the code. So not forgetting that it's human beings and people um, sitting in, their, in front of their computers and their laptops, making sure that our modern digital world doesn't fall apart. Um, yeah, and a little bit about the Sovereign Tech Fund. Um, we started in 2022, in the end of 2022, and we support the development, the improvement, and the maintenance of open uh, digital infrastructure in the public interest. And we are funded by the German Federal Ministry for Economic Affairs and Climate Action. So um, basically, there is a recognition of the fact that these foundational software components, um, without which many, many things would not work, are uh, crucial to innovation and the continued economic development of both Germany and Europe and the rest of the world. Um, so it sounds, you know, these are big fancy words, big fancy ways of talking about it. What are we actually doing? Well, in um, 2023, we had a budget of 11 and a half million euros approximately. And this year we've had 17 million. And as Kai mentioned, we are optimistic and hopeful that um, it will continue to stay at the same level, at least for next year and maybe for the future, because as a fund that focuses, or as an organization that focuses on maintenance, um, you need to plan long-term. And um, so yeah, that's what we're thinking about. And um, we really focus on existing critical technologies. So the Sovereign Tech Fund at the moment does not look at prototypes. We don't look at um, end using or at user facing applications. We really think about what is already out there who is using it, um, and we have a lot of different criteria to help us determine um, what is prevalent, what is relevant, and what is in the public interest. Um, so we have four main mechanisms at the moment, um, which is our general investment fund, um, where we look at and contract with uh, maintainers, but also in particular, all sorts of people, depending on the different technological communities, um, whether they, to in order to uh, work on milestone-based contracts, so we don't do donations, it's not grants, it's all really like a work contract or a, with sets of deliverables, um, and we work on that collaboratively. It's not Mirko or me going to someone and saying, you need to do maintenance. I mean, usually the people who are working on it, they're like, please, let us do maintenance. Please pay us to fix the bugs and look at the security and do all these other things that, unfortunately, we know that um, you know, feature development is often the focus of a lot of consulting and contracting um, from private sector or from other, other units. Uh, we also have the Bug Resilience Program, which is, uh, sustainable way of dealing with vulnerability management. It has three components, which are uh, a, res a bug bounty program, which not only pays money when uh, someone finds an important bug, but also to the, um, to the people working on the project when they fix the bug. So it also includes a fixed bounty. We have um, a code, a security code uh, audit program where we finance all this so that there's no cost to the projects themselves. And we also have um, another partner that helps with basically helping those projects, the open source projects with work that is critical that they don't really have the capacity or the time to. So that can go from helping deal with technical debt, looking at um, writing documentation, um, doing other security fixes, things like that. 
And if you're in Berlin, which I can't remember, on, I almost forgot, on the 30th of September, we um, also commissioned a, a report, a study by, uh, doc, from Dr. Ellis, who's a researcher based in Northeastern University in the United States, and he has written about bug bounties um, and FOSS and the role of public interest. So if you are interested in an invitation, get in touch because it's on Monday, September 30th in Berlin. We're launching the report. There will be printed copies, and we'll have a great panel and guests, and Dr. Ellis will be there from the US to talk about the findings in his report. Um, then, um, to go back to the third program, we have Challenges, which uh, was a program that we started last year and it ran through this year, um, which used, uh, since we also, also always have to talk about the types of procurement, it uses pre-commercial com procurement in order to find people who were willing to work on um, short-term projects. It was a way for us to cast the net very wide and, and bring out people who maybe in their organizations, in their companies, were, were using open source but hadn't had the capacity to contribute back. And so the theme of the last challenges that we ran was the contribute back challenges, and we're thinking about themes for the future. Um, yeah, and the last part that we have is the fellowship for maintainers, which I won't say a ton about because Merkel's going to talk a little bit about that in a minute. Um, but the big question we often get is, okay, you're talking about technologies, all these things, these FOSS, what do you mean? And I just wanted to briefly touch on one example, maybe the most famous or most well-known one, which is uh, Log4j, which we, we started working with last year. Um, maybe you all remember in 20, end of 2021, the Log4Shell incident, um, which really rocked the whole world and like highlighted the fact of that digital infrastructure uh, is maybe maintained by people who are not getting paid and that it can really uh, suffer from overuse. And we are uh, contracted with them for almost 600,000 euros for this year and last year to work on things like the release pipeline, documentation, um, setting, fixing the, the repository structure, looking at efficiency, and also things like introducing fuzz testing. So um, it's been really cool, I think, working with them. Mirko has done, I think, a lot with, uh, with Christian Grobmeyer. And yeah, that's an example of technologies, but there's other ones that you may have heard of. Um, it's all on our website, for example, but FreeBSD most recently, Fortran, that old programming language, they're undergoing a renaissance. Um, we've also supported FFmpeg, which is a, I think, multimedia um, coder and decoder, um, Sequoia PGP, and I think I've seen a lot of Yocto project name tags, so um, maybe you've heard of them as well. Yeah, and then I'm gonna turn it over to Mirko now. Was your slide actually? Well, I can talk about this one as well. So yeah, again, so uh, also hi from my side. I'm Mirko from the Open Tech Fund. I'm a program manager there, as um, Paul said. Yeah, so we are also like um, like just another uh, picture for infrastructure maintenance. So I'm from Dresden. Um, that is our bridge that collapsed last week. Um, we can make fun about this because nobody got harmed. So uh, thankfully, we have a new example of what does it mean like to maintain public uh, physical infrastructure. But the same goes up as well for the digital infrastructure, as we all know. Um, yeah, I want to talk a little bit about fellowship for maintenance. I only have like one minute left, unfortunately. But um, uh, yeah, so that's our new uh, baby, so to say, in the program. We are very excited about this. We started this last Thursday. It's um, a complementary program to our general fund and the BRP, what Porn talked earlier about. So it's not something in, you know, um, uh, in competition, so to say. It's something where we see there is a structural need for supporting maintainers directly, which are doing this unseen and uh, work, uh, unpaid work most of the times, um, to work with them directly. That is a little bit different from our general fund, where we uh, more have this, you know, thinking of deliverables and milestones that are very concrete, where you work on something and then in the end you deliver something and invoice this. So as Paul said, we are not doing funds or grants, we are doing investments. So for us, it's a normal contract. In this case, we are also doing like normal service contracts with uh, maintainers, but um, they are supposed to work on the maintaining tasks and activities over there, like triaging security, um, vulnerabilities like doing release management, working on the documentation, working with their communities, all that stuff that is more or less um, recurring activities, but also like the non-recurring things that maintainers usually do. And therefore we designed this uh, program. I did a survey or like we did a survey in spring this year uh, where like a lot of people were respond, um, responding and at least like 316 said they would be interested in such a program and so we set it up and also use the results of the survey to really inform this pilot. So it's a pilot um, that's running next year, 12 months, 
and um, we are doing this for up to five maintainers. One person we want to employ internally, so that's going to be an internal employment for someone that is located in Germany and is able to sign a German work contract. And for the others, it's a freelance, um, yeah, you know, a freelance contract uh, with different sizes, so to say. So we asked also, like, what kind of what would be a preferred weekly working hours, and we found out that. This is rather diverse, so there are people who would just use like eight hours a week to work on their maintained projects, and that would also be a nice avenue, as we can imagine, to, uh, you know, step by step get into uh, uh, a paid open source maintainership kind of thing. And so maybe in this year or next year, that's going to be then the Friday, and maybe then uh, the year after it's also the Thursday and so on. So we can imagine that there's different demands and needs. So uh, as we all know, open source ecosystem is very diverse and there is no one silver bullet and we want to learn with that pilot, which is a small one, as you can see, um, but we want to learn from that and then expand it um, depending on the learnings we have beginning and then with, with, with 2026 um, and depending on our budget and so on. So that's always the constraint we have. Uh, and that's it for fellowship for maintainers. Um, I'm handing it back to Poen for a quick summary. Yeah, we're required contractually to always have this graphic in our presentation. That's why it's here. Uh, if you want to get in touch, please do. Um, we are on uh, email, Mastodon, LinkedIn, and you can find out more about the fellowship program on that website. And that's it. And come get t-shirts. Yeah. <laughs>